In this question, the key thing it looks at and the key topic it hits on is all to do with circle properties, lines, tangents, diameters, and anything associated like that. It also does bring in other bits about shapes that we should know, and it puts all these together into a question which, upon first glance, you would look at and go, oof, that could be quite intimidating. But when you break it down and you start to look at each of the sections and all the information on its own, actually ends up being relatively straightforward. So we've got this design here. It's a pentagon. There's a circle there that we can draw around it with a center of zero. We then add the design as shown into this diagram here. So it looks in this sort of shape here. AF is the diameter of the circle, calculate the size of the angle OFB. So ultimately, we want this angle down here. Now this is where we have to start thinking about properties of shapes and how we can work these into the diagrams. Now the first thing we have to remember is that all the angles around this, around the centre of the circle, add up to 360 degrees. And the key word in here is that it's a regular pentagon. Now, when we refer to regular shapes like that, regular pentagons, regular hexagons, etc., what that means is that all the sides and all the angles within the shape itself are equal. So all these angles are equal here, which means that this angle here, which refers to this angle given up here, is given by a fifth of the entire way around. So what we're then able to say is, right, so angle AOB is equal to one-fifth of 360 degrees. So what we can do is take the 360 degrees, divide it by 5, and that will then give us the angle. So one-fifth is 360 degrees, gives me 72 degrees. So that's this angle here. Great, that's the first step. Now, what do we do to get to the next step? Well, we also then have to remember that the entirety of this angle here, because it's a straight line, all of this adds up to 180. So I've got this section here, I can find this angle here by doing 180 take away the 72. So I can then say find so the angle FOB is equal to 180 degrees take away that 72 degrees. That then gives me 108 degrees. So I know this angle here. Now I have to ask myself, right, that's excellent. I can calculate that. How does that help me? Well, if we look at this little section here, where the angle that we're after is in, we know that O to F to B makes up a little triangle. But what we can also do is, if we look at the pentagon and the way it's laid out inside the circle, O to B, going from the centre to the edge of the circle, is the radius of the circle itself. But we also know that O to F, which does the exact same thing, is also the radius of the circle. So we can mark on lines here to show that they are equal, and then, lo and behold, this triangle here is an isosceles triangle. What that means is this angle here and this angle here are both the same. Now, we know all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if we do 180 degrees, take away this angle, we'll get the sum of these two. If we then half it, we get what that angle is. So what we can do is do 180 degrees, take away the 108 degrees that we had there, and we get angle FOB again, because we know that it's that angle there. What we can then do is figure out the angle O to F to B by saying that it's 72 divided by 2, because it's half of that angle, because the pair of these have to add up to this gap here. So I'm then able to say from that point, it's great, angle O to F to B is half of 72 degrees, which is 36 degrees. So I know that the answer to that one is that angle OFB is 36 degrees. Now this all comes from all the properties we know about lines, circles, tangents and shapes. We need to make sure that we're up on all this knowledge and that we understand everything that is involved in this. All the properties of triangles, all the angles adding up to 180 degrees, the difference between an isosceles triangle, an equilateral triangle, and all the other types. And what we also have to be able to do is understand all the properties of the other shapes that are involved. We need to make sure we're up on this. This is assumed knowledge, things that we learned back in S1 and S2. We need to bring these skills to the forefront when it comes to National 5.